In this session, we're going to have a look at the modular keyer and the workflow that you'll need to know to operate the modular keyer efficiently. To understand the modular keyer, we first need to step into the regular keyer to look at the fixed pipeline of a regular keyer type tool. I will select the keyer button in the menus and choose our sources as the front, back and mat. Click on the desktop to enter into the keyer. Inside the keyer, you have access to a plethora of keying tools. Tools such as the master keyer, RGB, YUV, HLS, channel, RGB CMYL and the luminance keyers which are instantly accessible. When looking at the RGB keyer as an example, the keying pipeline is fixed. What I mean by this is you would first sample your keying color with the plotting tool. You would then set your tolerance, possibly softness, and fine-tune the mat and then lastly adjust the color suppression. All of these functions happen in a very linear fashion in most keying applications. Now let's exit the keyer to the left of the interface and select the modular keyer button. Once again, let's choose the sources as the front, back and mat. Click on the desktop to enter into the modular keyer. The first thing you notice in the modular keyer is the batch schematic. Batch refers to nodal-based compositing, which is simply a pipeline where you can put all your tools within the pipeline to create a superior tool which can be flexible in every way. Looking at the default startup for the modular keyer, this involves the master keyer, and you can see how the various components or nodes which can be arranged in different orders to create a very powerful keying tool. The color-coded indications help us understand the flow of the connections and what they plug into. For example, red indicates the fill or front, green indicates the background, blue indicates the mat or alpha channel. In order for the key to take place, we need three parts. A fill, a background, and a key source to create the mat or alpha. If any of these components are missing, you will not be able to create the key correctly. The very last node in the modular keyer is the result. This brings everything together and you can see that it has three inputs into the node. On startup, the modular keyer assumes what tools or nodes you will need in order to pull the basic key, which already exists in the schematic. The node bin at the bottom of the screen shows all the other tools that you can connect to into the keying pipeline in order to achieve a great key. The modular keyer by default will always start up with the master keyer, but at any time you could change the startup mode into starting up in various different ways. For example, you could start the modular keyer using the RGB keyer by selecting it out of the list. The schematic pipeline is different and this will depend on the type of keyer you're using. So let's go ahead and switch back to the master keyer startup. Before we can proceed, there are a few hotkeys that you will need to be aware of. F1 which is the front or fill input view, F2, which is the background input view, F3 is the mat or alpha input view. Input view refers to the source being connected into the node that you'll be working with. So you're able to actually see what the incoming background, foreground and alpha channel will be in the various tool or node. F4 shows the current result or alpha view. The number 4 on the keyboard represents the contextual view of the overall result of the modular keyer. So you can be in any point of the pipeline and you're able to see the overall result of what you're working on. Finally, you can press Control Escape on the keyboard to switch to the schematic view or simply swipe to the left hand side of the interface to bring up the schematic view regardless of what tool you're looking at. Now let's have a look at the subject to be keyed. Firstly, double click on the master keyer node and press F4 to look at the current result view. When I scrub through the source in the time bar, you can see that the subject has hard and soft edges. Things like this make keying challenging at the best of times and to really tackle this key properly, it would be best to perform the keyer in two sections. One pipeline would be for the hard edges and the second pipeline would be for the soft edges of the key. Let's start off by working on the hard edges. Choose the color pot in the master keyer controls and drag the picker over the key color to sample it. 
you can see that the key has been performed on the image and let's switch to the result mat output by pressing F4 again. If we scrub through the time bar, you can see that we already have a great start to the key but we still need to carry on with the refinements. The master keyer could very easily clean this key up quickly but let's go back to the batch schematic and look at the modular keyer to continue down the pipeline. To do this, simply swipe to the left to return to the schematic view. Following the pipeline of the keyer, double click on the 2D histogram node and press F4 to see the current result. We can use the histogram to crush the black levels as well as boost the white levels of the key. You can see straight away that our edges look much sharper. If you press 4 to see the overall result, we can see by scrubbing the time bar how the key is looking so far. It's not bad. You can also see that the hard edges need to be shrunk slightly. So let's go back to the schematic view by swiping to the left of the interface. Double click on the matte edge node and press 4 to see the overall result. In this tool we can enable the shrink option and set the value to about 2. Here we have got some very good looking hard edges. Now by pressing F4 to see the result view you will also notice that the alpha or soft edges have been completely destroyed. If you don't see this, press F4 again to bring up the matte view. Don't worry about this as we will deal with the hair in the second part of the pipeline. But to complete our hard edge matte, we need to go ahead and get rid of the garbage which exists on the edges of the frame. Swipe to the left and double click on the garbage mask node in the schematic. Once again, press F4 to see the result. To the right of the play controls, click on the add button to add a garbage mask into the scene. Simply draw the garbage mask around the subject by clicking a point on a frame and repeating that action until you have actually closed the garbage mask. Now we have to tell the garbage mask to actually retain the original alpha or mat which exists inside the original mask. To do this, simply enable the region of interest and now we have completed the first part of the pipeline. Let's swipe to the left of the interface to return back to the modular keyer in the schematic. Now that we have created the hard edge key with the nodes that were provided initially, you could potentially have as many nodes as you like to build the perfect keyer. So the schematic does stand the slight chance of getting messy depending on your work style. To keep things tidy, in the node bin there is a node called the matte blend. If I pull this node out of the node bin, you can see that it is a contained pipeline. Let's break the connections in the schematic by clicking and dragging a line across the connections. This is so that we can insert the nodes into the matte blend tool in a moment. With all the connections severed, I will drop the nodes in the order of the pipeline I was using earlier. So we will start off with the master keyer, followed by the 2D histogram, the matte edge node, and finally the garbage mask node. If you wish to pull a node out, simply hold down the control and alt hotkey on the keyboard and drag the node out of the matte blend pipeline. I'll just undo that step. Now let's quickly reconnect the pipeline. The front image will go into the result front input and the back image will go into the result back input. Instead of dragging connections, you could also hold down the shift hotkey on the keyboard and touch the matte image node to the back of the matte blend node and a connection will be automatically created. And finally, we can connect the output of the matte blend node to the matte alpha input of the result node. The flow of the pipeline is quite evident. Now the matte blend node currently only shows one part of the pipeline. By double clicking on the M blend text, it will bring up the controls at the bottom of the interface. Press the Add button and a second pipeline will be added into the Matte Blend node. You can have a maximum of four layers per Matte Blend node and you can have as many as you want in the Modular Keyer schematic. Swiping to the left will bring up the node bin and scroll the nodes to find the Master Keyer node. Now I'll pick up the Master Keyer node and drop it into the second part of the pipeline. Double click on the new Master Keyer node and press F4 to see the current result. Now even though the first image appears to be black and white, click on the color pot and sample over the image's background. Smoke will know what color to key. 
The key we have now created retains the hair detail but still needs more refinement. Firstly, hold down the Alt hotkey on the keyboard and click and hover over the hair of the subject. This will bring up the contextual sliders. At any point, you can release the Alt hotkeys and this will allow you to adjust the values on the slider. I will adjust the matte overall and matte shadows so that I can pull the most information out of the soft edges. I'm not worried about the torso if it goes grey because we only care about the hair in this keyer. Let's further refine the alpha. I'll change the sampling from matte to patch 1 and hold down the control key on the keyboard. With this I can then drag small squares over the black areas to set the sample. The default settings will remove any excess grey in the black areas of the key. Now I want to isolate the head and the hair so I'll swipe back to the left to get back to the modular keyer schematic and in the node bin I will pull out another garbage mask node and drop it after the master keyer node. Double click on the garbage mask node and press F4 to see the result view. Clicking the add button to the right of the player controls again we can draw a garbage mask around the head and hair just to keep that section. Remember to enable the region of interest to retain the initial mat coming into the garbage mask node. I would also advise adjusting the offset to add additional softness as part of this garbage mask. So here we have our soft edge alpha. If I swipe to the left of the interface, in the schematic view I can select the other garbage mask and when I press F4 we can then see the hard edges of the alpha. So coming back to the schematic view one more time by swiping to the left, the matte blend node can be used to combine the two mats or alphas together. Make sure that you double click on the blue part of the matte blend node and this will bring up the blending options. Press F4 to see the result. The matte blend node already has done a basic blend for us. However, if we switch from the basic blend to curve blend, we can then choose how the mats are blended together. I will settle on the maximum option as this does a great job. If you don't want to use the matte blend nodes to combine your mats, you could also use the logic op nodes located in the node bin inside the schematic view. Now press 4 on the keyboard to see the contextual result. When scrubbing the time bar, we can see how the two alphas have come together to give us the perfect key. In the next part, we will examine how to finish this key off using color suppression, color warping and pixel spreading to finalize the edges.